Hi, and welcome to S for Science. Where are you listening to? It seems to me like a slow but beautiful song. It's calm, harmonious. It's music, those are notes. But who wrote this song? Well, nobody, and a lot of people at the same time. Because what you're listening to is the noise made by the largest encyclopedia in the world, the largest collection of human knowledge that exists, Wikipedia. This is possible thanks to this site that is dedicated to sounding a note every time an article is modified in the virtual encyclopedia, or each time a new user registers. The bells indicate that information has been added, and the strings indicate that information has been removed. The tone of the note depends on the size of the addition. The larger this is, the lower the note, and vice versa. The deepest and longest notes correspond to new users. But now there's no more sound. Now you can only see Wikipedia. The size of the circles depend on the size of the edition, and the colors identify what type of user has edited the article. White circles register users. Green, users who are not. The stripes that appear in blue above indicate that a new user has signed up. Look, you can understand what is happening, but using a totally different sense. Although there are also things that you could not know existed before, such as the different type of users that you could only know by being able to see them. Before you listen to Wikipedia, now you see it. You're perceiving two different realities of the same reality, written and created by human beings. But is this reality real? The universe. Everything we know. Yourself. Everything, absolutely everything, is nothing more than your brain interpreting what interacts with you in its own way. How many colors are there? How many musical notes are there? Well, this is determined solely by what your brain wants to interpret through your senses. Right now, you're listening to me, but what you're really hearing are waves. Just like when you see something, the only thing that you're seeing are electromagnetic waves. You know that now you're seeing red, and now green, and now blue. But I'm gonna tell you what you're actually seeing, or rather, interpreting as you please. Red is nothing more than electromagnetic waves or photons, the particles of light, with a wavelength of 700 nanometers. Green, 550 nanometers, and blue, 450. Do you want to see a wavelength of 800 nanometers? You'll never be able to. One of 300? Forget about it. Human beings can see wavelengths that are from 400 to 700 nanometers. This is what is called visible light. A nanometer is more or less what a glucose molecule measures. But the electromagnetic spectrum, that is, all the possible waves that there are, is infinite. That is to say, there are waves that measure only one wavelength of an atom, while there are waves that have a wavelength of the size of buildings. And we can only see a very small fraction of this absolutely enormous number of wavelengths. It's our brain what tells us how each wavelength should be for us. It is it who translates a simple number into something as important to us as colors. This is why our reality is unique. If, for example, we look at the case of mantis shrimps, we find that this animal has the incredible ability to see wavelengths much smaller than those which humans can see. That is, it is capable of seeing, apart from visible light, ultraviolet light, which allows it to see four times more colors than us. Now try to imagine what it would be like to be a mantis shrimp. Try to imagine what it would see. Try to imagine other colors apart from the ones you already know. That is simply impossible. We can't see beyond the reality that we have created for ourselves. We humans have our reality with a specific number of colors, and mantis shrimps have their reality with four times more colors than us, a reality that we will never be able to even imagine. You may think that we are capable of seeing other wavelengths, such as infrared. Who hasn't seen one of those images in which the temperature of our body is represented by a scale of colors? There, a scale of colors. Technology allows us to translate what we cannot see into our seven-color reality. It's not that we can see ultraviolet or infrared light. We simply have a machine that can detect it and represent it to us with our visible light, with our reality. An easy way to understand this is that you think about the case of a colorblind person 
who cannot distinguish between green and orange. For you, it's going to be very easy to distinguish between these two colors, in the same way that the mantis shrimp can distinguish visible light and ultraviolet light. But for that colorblind person, it's going to be almost impossible to distinguish between these two colors. They are just going to see a brighter green but we'll never be able to imagine the orange color. But so far, we've only talked about sight. What about the other senses? We are used to considering only five senses in our body. Sight, taste, hearing, smell, and touch. However, there are many other senses that we normally don't take into account, despite the fact that we are constantly using them. The first of them is equilibrioception, which is what allows you to be sensitive to movement and gravity. Then there is thermoreception, the sense that allows you to be sensitive to temperatures, a sense that could be equivalent to infrared vision. Since this is the main electromagnetic radiation in which heat is emitted from most of the objects in our daily life. So we have here a case contrary to the previous one. While there are animals that perceive or feel heat through infrared radiation, we perceive it in a totally different way. We feel the heat. But how to describe it? For an animal that doesn't have thermoreceptors, it's going to be impossible to imagine a way of perceiving heat that is like we do. For us, it is equally difficult to imagine how it would be like to see heat in a form of infrared radiation. How would you explain to an animal that doesn't have thermoreceptors how hot and cold feel? It's simply impossible. A third non-traditional sense is the so-called kinesthetic sense. This sense is what allows you to know at all times where all the parts of your body are, even if you're not perceiving them with any other sense. Close your eyes. Surely you feel your hand and know where it is without even touching it. The fourth sense would correspond to pain, a very important sense that makes us move away from danger, and that one might think is closely related to touch, but not really, it has nothing to do. The sense of pain is what allows us to know how our body is inside. Although we can also perceive it on the skin, physiologically it has been shown that there is nothing related to touch. When your gut hurts, a leg, when your lungs hurt, for example, what are you feeling is pain. You're feeling yourself from the inside. And the list goes on. There are still more than 11 non-traditional senses, such as hunger, the desire to drink, or to breathe. Apart from all of this, there is another sense that does not have its own sensory organ, but which is at the same time one of the most important senses. And this one is chronoception, that is, the ability to be sensitive to time. It is not known exactly how this perceptual ability works, but it is known to be highly distributed over a wide network in our nervous system. We may not be able to see ultraviolet light, but we can perceive the fourth dimension. Not bad. And here we could say that we have finished with the senses of human beings. But now comes the really interesting thing, because on this planet there are many living beings, each one with many senses different from ours, each one with its own interpretation of reality. An example of these senses could be collocation, which allows certain animals to have a three-dimensional vision of their environment from sound. This, for example, is how dolphins see us through echolocation. There's also electroreception, which is the ability to detect electric fields, or magnetoreception, which is the sense that allows some animals to detect magnetic fields. Let's now imagine the case of bats. They can see ultraviolet light, and they have echolocation. Now, try to feel like a bat. Their interpretation of reality is very different from ours, and what for us is a dark and dangerous cave may be for them a paradise full of lights and colors that we will never be able to even imagine. Poof. Every time, our reality seems less real. But what happens if we go to the world of plants? Through the use of a variety of sensory receptors, plants can detect light, gravity, temperature, humidity, chemical substances, chemical gradients, their orientation, magnetic fields, infections, damage to their tissues, and mechanical pressure. It is a proven experimental fact that when you break, for example, a tree branch, this tree secretes a series of chemical substances that warns it that something is hurting it. It has also been shown that many trees feel when cold is about to come, and they drop their leaves to save energy. This shows that plants also feel reality. 
but in such a different way that it is even impossible to make analogies. René Descartes said cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. With this, what he wanted to say is that the fact that a person could think proves that that person exists. But this famous philosophical approach can be seen in reverse. While it is true that everything that surrounds us existed and will exist with or without our existence, the unique reality that we experience and that is so different in each person would not exist if we didn't exist. You could say, cogito ergo est. I think, therefore it exists. But let's go back to science. What we could call the real reality, that one that we will never be able to live, we know how it manifests. Science has allowed us to get out of Plato's cave and understand how this reality behaves. That reality that we will never be able to feel, but that we know how it behaves. Red will continue to be red for us, but we know that they are photons with a wavelength of 700 nanometers. We know that in the universe, everything is matter and energy, these existing in the form of elementary particles. We don't know what they are, the only thing that we can do is interact with them, and through indirect observations, measure their properties. But here comes the interesting part. We know that all the particles in the universe, whether elementary particles or molecules, behave like particles and waves at the same time. Because even having reached this level of precision, the reality hides again. It's not frustrating enough that we can't see what particles look like, that also they can behave in two different ways at the same time. They are particles and at the same time, they are waves. Here you can see an illustrative image that represents this property, wave-particle duality, in which you can see how the same phenomenon can have two different perceptions. There are many ways to demonstrate that elementary particles can behave like particles and waves at the same time. One of the most famous methods is the well-known double-slit experiment. This consists of passing a beam of electrons through a double slit, these reaching an electron-detecting wall. What this wall detects is an interference pattern, that is, vertical lines with electrons and lines without electrons. How can this happen if in theory they should go straight, forming only two lines? Well, the only explanation is that these electrons are behaving like waves and particles at the same time. This in itself is very counterintuitive, but something even stranger is what happens when electrons are released one by one. The pattern continues to form with a successive arrival of electrons, despite the fact that these should not have interfered with each other since they have passed one by one. What is happening? Well, that the same electron, behaving like a wave and a particle at the same time, passes through both slits, interfering with itself. It seems unreal. But wait, because here comes the best part. If we put a device to see through which of the two slits the electron has passed, the electron stops behaving like a wave, the interference pattern is destroyed, and only two fringes are observed on the detector wall. As if it was a particle. It seems that reality does not want us to see it. Welcome to quantum physics. We have said that as particles we understand an elementary particle, such as electrons, which are the ones with which the double slit experiment has been done with. But you might be wondering if we could go bigger, if we could try with molecules, for example. Yes, the experiment has worked on molecules. Can we go bigger? Yes, we can go up to, for example, humans. Yes, you. You can behave like a wave and a particle at the same time. If you move at a speed of 1 meter per second, for example, you would have a wavelength of 9.5 times 10 to the power of negative 36 meters. As absurd, impossible, and unreal as it may seem to you, if we could perform the experiment on humans and throw them through a double slit, we would indeed have an interference pattern between us. You behave like a wave and a particle at the same time. However, we do not perceive ourselves as a wave because quantum phenomena are hardly observable in our scales, since we are made of many elementary particles, so the dimension of the experiment would be colossal, larger than the observable universe itself. But it would work. 
It has been tested with particles much larger than electrons, such as molecules, and the wave-particle duality is still being observed in the double-slit experiment. It seems that the more we want to know about the true reality, the more unreal it becomes. Depending on how we study reality, to know how it really is, it seems to be mocking us by showing us two realities, waves and particles at the same time. Who can fit this in their head? And the best of all is that the wave-particle duality is not even the true reality. The cylinder that seemed to us as the true reality before is just another shadow. Our reality is not made of circles, squares, or cylinders. Because even the most elementary particles are not real. The conception of a particle as a small ball is wrong. The wave-particle duality is just another way of interpreting reality, that, although it behaves like a wave and particle, is not even made of waves or particles. You should know what an electron is. At school, they tell us that they are those little balls that revolve around the nuclei of an atom. And this leads us to the idea that the universe is full of atomic nuclei surrounded by rotating electrons around you. So there should be a lot of electrons in the universe. But in fact, there is only a single electron in the universe that propagates through space and time in such a way that it appears to be in many places simultaneously. Welcome to quantum field theory. This is currently the closest interpretation to reality that we have. It basically says that the universe is not made neither of particles nor of waves, but of quantum fields. Let's go back to the case of our friend, the electron. When physicists say that there is only one electron in the universe, they mean that the electron does not exist as a fundamental concept in the universe, since there are neither waves nor particles, so an electron cannot exist. What really exists is the quantum field of the electron. This is a single electron field in the entire universe. All the electrons that we observe in the universe, they are punctual excitations of this same field. That's why all of them are exactly identical and indistinguishable from each other. And exactly the same happens with the rest of the elementary particles. Each elementary particle has its field. But it's not that the fields are located in a point of the universe, as the particles were. But instead, the quantum fields are something intrinsic of space-time. They are everywhere. The quantum field of a particle is in all places in the universe at the same time. It exists because they exist with it, not that they are something localized. They're everywhere. Let's look at an analogy to understand it better. If, for example, we imagine the gravitational field around the Earth, we can see that it is everywhere. The only thing that Earth does is create a deformation, a very punctual excitation in this huge field. However, the gravitational field is throughout the entire universe. It extends infinitely, because gravity exists everywhere in the universe. Well, the same thing happens with particles. They are nothing more than excited punctual zones of quantum fields. It is for this reason that particles are not particles or waves, but are excitations of fields. The concept of wave and particle is nothing more than a human invention to interpret reality. A reality that may behave like waves and particles, but that is made neither of waves nor of particles. But here comes the really interesting part. We cannot be sure that the true reality is made of fields, and we will surely have a hard time finding out which one is the authentic reality. We may never find it. We cannot affirm that quantum field theory is the true reality. We cannot be sure. It is simply the theory that rather predicts the behavior of our apparent reality. Our senses, together with our brain, are what create an illusion of what the universe is. When you touch something, when you listen to your favorite song, when you see a beautiful landscape, when you are with your loved ones, the only thing that you're feeling is a reality that you create in your brain. Trying to imagine how every other living being in the universe must feel results in unsuccessful attempts, as we do not know any reality apart from the one that exists in our mind. Reality is not out there, but besides, in your head. Your reality, the only reality that you will ever live. A reality that needs you to exist in order to exist. Because real reality, if it can be called that, we do not know it, nor we will ever know it. Because everything that we live, feel and experience, we can do it thanks to our mind, which interprets that reality. No matter how hard we try, we will always remain trapped in our unreal reality, or not so unreal. 
because it is a reality that exists because you exist and not the other way around. It will be you who will decide which one of the two is real for you. Thank you very much for watching the video and goodbye.